and a good Thursday morning. I almost messed up the day, uh, being that we're here with our special program. Uh, many of you that are tuned in, you already know we have Brother Glenn Hill here with us, uh, going to bring us in on some sharing of his testimony and, uh, of course, answering some questions and telling us about his book, uh, Christianity's Great Dilemma, Is Jesus Coming or Is He Not?, uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the various testimonies that folks have had regarding that book, myself included, uh, and I'll share a bit about that here in a moment. My name is Mike Miano. I serve as the director of the Power of Preterism Network. This is a ministry provided to you through the Power of Preterism Network called the Preterist Power Hour. We like to call this our hour of power, where we gather together, we share some thoughts, we have interviews, we highlight uh, clarity, healing, and strategy regarding the power and the progress of the preterist view. And uh, it's a privilege to serve in that capacity. You could learn more about the Power of Preterism Network by visiting powerofpreterism.com. Of course, if you're on social media, we encourage you to visit our Facebook page, the Power of Preterism Network. Follow along as we have various guests and different, we go live at different times. Uh, as I said, today is a uh, sort of off schedule. It's an exciting moment. So we like to mark out some special time uh, to have these discussions. Uh, tomorrow, we will not have our podcast, just to give you a heads up, as we normally go live every Monday and Friday at 1030 a.m. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, what I'd like to do is just open us in a word of prayer, and then we will move right in on our throwback Thursday edition, if you will, uh, of the Preterist Power Hour. And you might say a throw forward Thursday as well being that we'll talk about uh, resources to come, announcements regarding conferences, and how you can learn about Glenn's, uh, Brother Glenn Hill's resources from times past, his testimony, and uh, some of the things the Lord's doing in his, in his life right now, and things that he'll be doing in the future. So uh, what a great show we have ahead of us. Let's go ahead and set our eyes on the Lord, or thank him uh, in, the, at, at, in the least, that he's set our mind on him. And at most, that he will continue to give us growth and increase in the things of God. Let's go ahead and appreciate all that we have in him this morning. Mighty God, we do thank you. We thank you for providing all things pertaining to life and godliness. Lord, as we often think of the way that you taught us to pray uh, in scripture, we know that those are fulfilled realities, that we're not waiting for da daily bread, Lord. We're relishing uh, in the fact that we worship a God who gives us daily bread. Uh, we thank you for your kingdom being manifest on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for what we celebrate in you. As Brother Glenn has reminded many of us, and a testimony I know in my life, is that we've moved from hoping hoping to having. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your faithfulness. We praise you for all that you've provided. And we ask that you provide the increase in our lives, in your church, uh, and in our world so that others might further see your glory. Thank you, Lord. Go before us, be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, I'm excited to get in on our uh, discussion with Glenn. I will let you know uh, things that we've been talking about here on the program are review of the Berean Bible Church Conference, which of course, more recently, we uh, began to uh, review the videos, have interviews with folks from the conference, whether they were guests there or they were contributors, speakers, Glenn Hill spoke. Many of us listened to that message. Uh, we here at the Blue Point Bible Church listened to that on a Sunday morning, and we're uh, appreciative of uh, this, you know, what Glenn had revealed regarding her gates being open. And uh, we'll get in on some discussion about that as we move in on our program this morning. Uh, however, again, we've been re reviewing the Berean Bible Church Conference. You can find resources. You can listen to all the presentations on YouTube by simply looking up Berean Bible Church and finding access to the videos through that platform. Uh, we also have been talking about the Fulfilled Media Presents Conference. Scripture alone is the muscle of preterism. Uh, you can find those resources by going to YouTube as well, simply putting in New Covenant Network, or you can find all the written articles and audio at fulfilledmedia.com or preteristvoice.org. Another thing uh, we've been reviewing is the 2019 What's Next conference that we had. Uh, I had posted a review years ago. Uh, you can go to YouTube and put in What's Next, Power of Preterism, and uh, you'll be given opportunity to listen to all of the conferences. Or, of course, you can go to our blog site, powerofpreterism.wordpress.com, and 
uh, you can find a blog putting the number 2019 you will find a conference review uh, and of course glenn hill was one of our speakers in 2019 so you'll learn more about his presentations there as well uh, again reminder there will be no session of the preterist power hour tomorrow uh, however on monday we will be here 10 30 and most likely we will have a guest so i want to encourage you to be here with us monday at 10 30 uh, I'm looking at two uh, different guests that we might have on the program. I guess you can call it a surprise. Uh, so the announcement will be out there uh, as we move closer to Monday and uh, look forward to it as uh, I always am appreciative. And I know many of you share the same, that you're appreciative of uh, having the guests and the interviews and those resources. So uh, look forward to it and be there 1030 a.m. Eastern this coming Monday. So uh, moving in on talking about Glenn Hill, Hill for a moment here, uh, I want to say that I have the privilege of fellowship and learning with and from Brother Glenn Hill. Uh, you know, I actually recorded the first time I've ever talked to Glenn Hill uh, was October 16th, 2013. And uh, I had been, you know, journeying into preterism and I was given this book, Christianity's Great Dilemma, Is Jesus Coming or Not? Now, when I read the book, I was already, for the most part, convinced of preterism. However, Glenn touched on some of the truths that I understood as a preterist, however, couldn't find words to, to make it simple. I think many of us are aware of, uh, you know, complex theology, uh, and sometimes it's hard to bring that down. We might have a maybe an understanding of it in our mind. Uh, however, it's hard to explain that and really boil it down to simple truths. And when I read Glenn's book, it was a breath of fresh air, to use that phrase. Uh, and it encouraged me that, uh, you, you know, this is something that can be explained to other people. And I know I speak for many others, as Berean Bible Church for years had been giving away, maybe still does, gives away Christianity's great dilemma as a gift to visitors. So, uh, you know, again, I think that speaks, you know, uh, that's a testimony to that book. And I know Glenn has shared over the years uh, many testimonies regarding the book as well. So uh, it's definitely a blessing to know him, to have fellowship with him. And again, uh, you know, beyond preterism, which we'll talk about here in a moment, uh, we'll see that Glenn truly exemplifies a man of God who has moved from hoping to having. And he appreciates that at every moment that he can. And, you know, scripture tells us about having contentment uh, and how great that is, godly contentment and uh, how beautiful it is to demonstrate the joy of the Lord. And, and Glenn shows that and, and is authentic about it and impresses each of us to have that and or impresses upon us to have that. So many of us are familiar with the, the message from hoping to having that Glenn had presented years ago. I'm going to go ahead and try to dig it up. I think there, it's on a DVD. Uh, however, we'd encourage you to check it out. Uh, Glenn might even have the, the resource to make it available uh, in some way or fashion, and we'll work toward that or tell us where we can find it. So, um, you know, if I might share here just at the very beginning, uh, you know, Glenn, again, has been a testimony in, in my life, and I, I've shared this for years. I've shared quotes from him, and I want to sort of uh, remind you of some of them, uh, the teachings that he's offered and some quotes from Glenn Hill that have blessed my life. Glenn had said, while no one knew exactly when Jesus was coming, they could know from Jesus's prophecies when his return was getting close, nearby, and about to happen. Another point from his book uh, was the truth of the end times and the second coming of Jesus will replace your sadness with the same joy, peace, and happiness that many my pelt, my, many people, including myself, are now experiencing. When you you know you lose this idea of the end times and this ex expectation, and I've been there. Uh, and it, it was a blessing to know that um, God has so much more for us when we understand the kingdom of God. Uh, then Glenn has, you know, with his normal uh, authenticity that he expresses his, uh, he said this, as a young preacher, I was sure I knew it all. It's a bad disease. And I'll tell you, I know the truth of that. Um, you, you know, I recently actually had come to admit that I'm a know-it-all in recovery. And, uh, you know, I believe it's uh, important to, uh, you know, admit that and, and try to work toward the undoing of that. And Glenn has, again, you know, served as a testimony to that. He, he reminded us at one conference that speaking of the first century apostles, they traded it all. They traded it all. A life they could not keep for a life that kept them. 
And of course, that speaks beyond the first century. That speaks to even our day. You know, we have many that trade a life that they cannot keep. Hopefully, you you number yourself in that group uh, for a life that kept them. And uh, then, you know, another quote, the last quote I'll share here, uh, and this kind of leans in on Glenn's more recent teachings. What's next for preterism? Perhaps it should be evangelism. And that was a quote from the uh, 2019 What's Next conference. And uh, I agree. I think Glenn has expressed that to us and, and truly uh, impressed upon us that we need to walk in evangelistic efforts and, and be willing to share the gospel, have a heart for the gospel to allude to one of his more recent teachings. Uh, so again, just to remind folks, uh, some of the things that Glenn has offered up over the last couple of years that have been a blessing, uh, he's, the book, Christianity's Great Dilemma, will provide a link uh, for you to go ahead and purchase that book or reach out to Glenn and purchase that book through him if that's uh, how he would rather you do it. We'll make all of that available at the end of the program here. Uh, and then, uh, of course, Berean Bible Church, they've hosted Glenn uh, for, at the conferences uh, each year. And Glenn has had, you know, from hoping to having, talked about Lazarus and the rich man, living in the meantime was a message it's, you can find on YouTube in 2013. Uh, another look at Matthew 10, 23 in 2022. Uh, and then, of course, the most recent, her gates shall never be shut. And then he's spoken here at the Blue Point Bible Church for years as well. Uh, he had preached in 2016. Uh, a, a sermon called an x-ray of the old of an old preacher's heart and a beautiful message you could go find that on youtube uh, we'll make the link available uh, he talked about the new heavens and the new earth with us in 2017 uh, there is not not a hell uh, there is no hell in 2018 and then in 2019 at the what's next conference that i've alluded to a couple times now he preached about revelation 21 and evangelism so uh, I had the privilege of also being with him at the Holston PBU Church, where we talked about rethinking the resurrection. His message was a blessing. I'll share that link and make that available. And, uh, you know, the, the message that he had preached at the uh, North Carolina Church, I'm not sure if it's still available. However, uh, we can dig that up and find that link for you uh, as well. And then Glenn was a part of a newspaper article, uh, We Are Not Living in the End Times. Uh, we have that available on our website, the Power of Preterism Network, so we can share that again with you. And then again, more recently, he spoke at the Fulfilled Media Presents conference uh, and shared the understanding of the last days. So all of these links will be available, as many as we can find, on a one-page effort. You know, it'll be a blog about this podcast with Glenn. So uh, go ahead, visit powerofpreterism.wordpress.com, and you'll be blessed to uh, find all those resources. So uh, with no further uh, waiting here. Uh, I want to go ahead and bring Glenn in and allow us to be blessed with our time and fellowship with him. Just takes a moment to unmute and Glenn will be here with us. Glenn, if you can unmute. And if you get a moment, please unmute your mic. In the meantime, uh, Glenn, I'm going to ask you to unmute your mic. However, Edward, I've unmuted your mic. I was going to ask you, you've been uh, privy to fellowship with Glenn over the years. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd ask you to just share a moment here uh, as Glenn's unmuting his mic. You know, what, what have been some of your your testimonies? Have you, you learned from Glenn? Have you seen his example? And I know you were there with us as we listened to the most recent uh, presentation by him. What are your thoughts? If you don't mind. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Yes. Um, what sticks in my mind is 
just uh, hoping to have him. Um, uh, let me see. Um, just his humbleness, and uh, and I, I think I think he, I think he's he's being modest because uh, he's been a blessing to all of us, you know, through his testimony and and um, his 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 uh, gratefulness to God. Is it, and um, <clears throat> which many people need to develop, you know, a gratefulness to God, you know, for all He's done, um, you know, and stop taking for granted what God has done for us, <clears throat> and expecting God to be like our Santa Claus, instead of God, you know, doing for us, we need to do for Him, you know, uh, serve Him in uh, proclaiming the gospel. You know, and um, this is what I kind of gather in that regard. Amen. Yeah, you know, uh, you spoke about the humility, and that's something that I've appreciated. By the way, folks, we uh, Glenn might call back in here. I think something happened with his phone, so I've uh, messaged him, and we're just gonna hope that he joins back in. But I appreciate what you said there, Edward, because his humility. Uh, has definitely been a blessing and, and it continues to be a blessing as uh, we were talking about and uh, I'm sure he'll allude to uh, we're going to have him here in October and uh, you know he continues to move beyond the average understanding of uh, you, you know the preterist intellect you know I know more recently uh, Glenn had shared I, I have a note here uh, he talked about you know we preterists have a great mind preterism has a great mind but it does it have a great heart and, uh, you know, I thought that was such a, a good provocation, if you will, regarding, uh, you know, our truth and, and what we have in him and uh, what we have in Christ and how we need to use that to be a bit more understanding, to be a bit more kind, uh, rather than always making it about being right. You, you know, and, and we might be right. That's that, you know, I, I agree with that. However, I think we need to further have that heart and that uh, mind for God. You know, the heart. Yes, I, see, I see where I was able to possess an increase in that in particular. Hello. Oh, You're here, Glenn. Yes. Okay, great. God bless. All right, cool. Well, we're glad you're here, Glenn. Uh, I want to go ahead and say good morning to you. Uh, I uh, got cut off or something. What happened? Anyway, I called yeah. back in. So I want to just tell you, you know, thank you. And I want to kind of bring you right in on things here. Um, you know, I shared enough about you. He gave enough resources that folks are going to be able to dig up. Uh, yeah. I'm also going to make the uh, testimony that you did with the boroughs of Berea. I'm going to make that available as well. And with that, I want to invite you in on the discussion. And please, you know, let us know uh, how you're doing. And then we'll jump right in on you sharing with uh, us how you came to know the Lord and some of your early experiences as a Christian. Okay, um, I'm doing okay. Um, I'm 82 now, and so a lot of things don't work <laughs> like they ought to. But I'm still up and about and able to go, and I'm grateful for that. And, of course, I guess most of you know that I remarried about six months ago to Lila Rogan. Um, my wife died in 2015 after 55 years of marriage, and I uh, thought I'd never be married again because I thought I'd never find another angel, but I did. And so we've been mighty happy for a little over six months now. And she's helped take the sadness and loneliness out of my life that I had known for about eight years since I lost, lost my sweet Betty Sue. But anyway, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have any more trouble than the average person that gets old, I guess. So I'm just grateful to still be able to take care of myself and get up and get about. And uh, I dread the day, I dread seeing the day when, when I can't go to a conference or something like that. But um, anyway, right now, I'm still, still pushing and still trying to, to maintain a, a schedule of doing things for the Lord. Well, amen. Are you there? Yes, we are. Uh, and, you know, okay. praising God that uh, you definitely, uh, you know, we definitely dread that day as well. So, you know, we're <laughs> good. 
thank you for uh, you know your perseverance and your willingness to uh, continue to serve the Lord in the way that you do and bless us, of course, uh, as well. Well, I'm grateful if it's any blessing to anybody. Um, so if you don't mind, let's jump right in on a little bit of your, your early testimony, if you don't mind, and you know, share with us, how did you come to know the Lord? Uh, what were some of your early experiences as a Christian growing in the Lord? Well, I, um, I always say that I gave my heart to Jesus when I was nine years old. Um, I, I, uh, with my family, uh, of course, as a nine-year-old boy, uh, I, I'd been to church all my life, but as a nine-year-old boy, I went, went with my family to a, an old Roberts uh, tent meeting. Uh, he came to town, and that, I was nine, so that'd be a few few decades ago. But um, in that in that meeting, I walked down that sawdust path and up to the front of the church to give my heart to the Lord at nine years old. I was baptized shortly after that in a river, in a river, and uh, I've tried to live for the Lord and do the right things ever since. I haven't always been successful at it, but it's been my endeavor. So through most of my school life, uh, I uh, tried to do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. I was raised in a real fundamental environment. And um, so I, I, I think sometimes that much I was robbed of a lot of things in my childhood because uh, our ministers thought they were sins. And uh, I'm grateful that as I've gotten older, I've come to find out that a lot of things that people say are sins are not sins. <laughs> uh, after I got delivered from some of that uh, kind of a preaching, I preached a sermon one time called Sin According to the Bible. <laughs> and so, uh, I couldn't play ball because that was a sin. I I couldn't uh, uh, learn to get in the band and play, learn to play instrument because uh, the band goes to the, the football games and I couldn't go to the football games because uh, that was wrong. Uh, I never learned to swim because I couldn't uh, wear a swimsuit. Uh, and I was in gym class uh, I was the oddball guy playing volleyball or basketball with long pants and a shirt on. But I did all those things trying to, you know, live for the Lord, trying to do what I was being told was the right thing to do. Again, I'm grateful that I've learned that most of the stuff that I was deprived of would have not been any problem to my salvation. But uh, nevertheless, uh, my past is what it is, and the Lord has blessed me, and things have turned out well for me, and I'm so grateful. I have Betty Sue and I were married about 55 years, and we have four wonderful children, and and 13 grandchildren, and now I'm on the verge of having 13 great-grandchildren. So while, while she's gone, left me eight years ago, she left me with a wonderful family, and they love the Lord, and they love me, and they love each other, and we enjoy being together, and so it's just a real blessing. And so whatever whatever I, I didn't do because of trying to follow the ministry that was leading me, uh, the Lord has turned it all for good, and I'm grateful to him. One of the main things in my life that uh, I think about sometimes is that uh, when I was in high school, I was a straight A student, and when I when I uh, graduated, I won a four year scholarship to North Carolina State University for full scholarship, and I was preparing that summer to go to off to school, and the, the minister of the church just preached hard against it that. Uh, that it would be wrong for me to leave the church and, and go off to school. And so by the end of the summer, I had uh, given up my scholarship and decided that I wouldn't wouldn't go off to school. So 
but it was, everything I did again was trying to do the best I knew to be to be right in the, and in the eyes of the Lord to be righteous. I'm glad when I learned today that I I'm glad that I learned one day that as an adult that I can't do enough and live good enough and pray enough and read enough or do anything enough to be righteous that it's all the gift of the Lord to me. I get to be righteous now, I believe, not because I'm doing a lot of good things, but because of what Jesus did and because of Jesus' righteousness, I can be righteous and and I'm I'm grateful for that. Now that I now want to do things that are wrong, I want even more to live for Jesus because he has given me his righteousness and I never want to make him ashamed or to embarrass him or to make him sad that he has died for me on the cross that I might be righteous and saved. Amen. So I don't know where to go next, I guess. Um, I bet soon I got married when we were 19 and again, her daddy was a pastor and and the most wonderful man I ever knew, I guess. I loved him and his wife, Betty's his mother, just like my own. And they were precious folks. And I was so, so blessed to marry into a, a church, a family like that. And um, as I said, we were married 55 years. But over the years, Betty's was said, before we got married, she was never married a preacher. And of course, uh, women who are married to preachers understand why, I'm sure. A lot of extra pressure and, and work and other things when you're, when you're a preacher's wife, and particularly if you're a pastor's wife and you're the first lady of the church. And I wasn't called, I was speaking a lot, but I wasn't called to preach. Um, when when I got married, but after, after I got married, I felt the call of the Lord to the ministry, and so uh, she got she kind of got to <laughs> got it to be married to a preacher anyway, <laughs> although it didn't start out like that. But so for many years, I I was assistant pastor to the man that was pastoring our church here in Rocky Mountain, and when he left. For other duties, I uh, became the pastor, and so it was totally about 45 years or so, I guess, that I worked in a pastor's uh, capacity, leading and guiding people as best I could. And uh, but um, shall I get into how I came to be uh, a prayerless now, or? You know what, if I might ask you, just double back. And by the way, thank you for, you, you know, you clearly read through the outline and you summed a lot of this stuff up. So thank you. And, uh, you know, and I appreciate God for what God continues to do through you as you still serve in that pastoral role in uh, more ways than you probably know. Uh, and obviously we praise God and we pray for your 13 grandkids. I mean, that's amazing. And, uh, you know, just the testimony that you continue to share with us is beautiful. If I might ask you this. When you were growing up, what would you consider the most convicting truth about Jesus Christ? What really gripped your heart when you were growing up about the things of God? Say that again. What really did what? What convicted you the most as you were growing up? What convicted oh. you the most about the things of God? Well, I don't know exactly what to say, Brother Mike. Um, I grew up in an environment, as my sister says, where everything was sin except going to church and going to school. <laughs> so uh, um, I, uh, I didn't feel like I could do anything hardly without it being uh, against the will of the Lord um, in, in an environment like that. Um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't ever go to a school dance or to a a school uh, 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 sock hop or whatever you call it in those days uh, because Christians don't dance. And I, I, when we got ready to order uh, our class rings for graduating from high school, I didn't order one because Christians don't wear jewelry. So uh, 
my life was really suppressed in a lot of ways. And again, again, I couldn't even, I was a good athlete, but I didn't get a chance to play because as mama said, uh, you might get to love ball more than you love Jesus. <laughs> and that might have happened. I don't know if I'd have pursued that kind of career. But um, what I've already said is that even the, giving up all those things that maybe not been necessary to give up, the Lord um, gave me a good life, and I'm grateful for it. Um, Amen. Uh, yeah, if you don't mind, Glenn, yeah, we could jump right into you sharing a bit with us about, yeah, where did you get this idea that Jesus's coming uh, was a dilemma for Christianity? Uh, and, you know, of course, uh, how did you come to learn about preterism? Well, the dilemma um, was not that Jesus was coming. The dilemma, I feel like, for the church is that Jesus promised to come in, in the lifetime of the disciples. He promised that Sanhedrin would see him coming and other things. And either the dilemma for Christianity is either he kept his word and came, you know, back 2,000 years ago, or he was a fraud and sort of not the Son of God. So that's the dilemma. I mean, the, the, the church faces today, as I see it, they either got to accept that Jesus kept his word and He's coming with a long time ago, or he didn't keep his word, and he was a, a false prophet. And that that's what that's what I mean by Christianity's dilemma. Uh, either Jesus did what he said he would do, or he didn't do it, and he was a fraud. I, of course, believe that he did what he said he would do, and that means he can't return a long time ago. I um, I preach that Jesus was coming soon for most of my life, um, up around late fifties or sixties. I'm eight, in my eighties now, but um, I had always believed that Matthew twenty four was about God's judgment on Jerusalem. So, uh, but but I believe that when you get to the verses about the Lord's coming in Acts and in the epistles and the revelation that all of that was yet to come. So when I, when John Bray wrote his book, Matthew 24 Fulfilled, uh, and I discovered it, uh, one of my church members saw, saw it advertised in a, in a magazine and, and we got it. I was just thrilled because he was just well-educated, well-traveled, Baptist evangelist that was seeing Matthew 24 much like I did. And so I was excited about that. And uh, he was in, uh, working out of Florida and I was in North Carolina. And when he came up this way, uh, I went to his meeting and got to meet him and got to know him. And over the two or three years, went to, went to a few of his meetings and really got close to him. Um, and then in one of, the, in fact, we ordered his book for our church, and we studied it, went through it. I believe on Wednesday nights. But in one of his later later editions of the book, on the back page, a plain back page, a plain blank page at the back of the book, he had a, a rectangle about the size of a business card. And in that, Brother John had put the words something like this. In my studies of Matthew 24, I have come to believe that all the comings of the Lord in the New Testament are the same as Matthew 24. Well, as I've already said, we saw Matthew 24, right? But when you get to Acts and the epistles, I was still looking for the Lord to come. So I was really kind of torn up, and I said to myself, but Brother John, you done gone too far now. But um, I'd come to love him and respect him so much, and I felt like if he uh, felt that way about it, I'd have to check it out. So I guess this was like 25 years ago now, so when I was, would have been in my late 50s or 
right on 60. And so we began to, Brother Sue and I began to to uh, study this matter and had another trivia motive. We were trying to get Brother John back on the straight and narrow way. But the more I studied, the more I realized he was right and I was wrong. We started going to any conference that was back in those days, which wasn't much of them. John Anderson was having one in Sparta every year, and we went there, and that's where we met men like Don Preston and Dave Curtis and William Bale and John Noe and some others. But uh, we listened to what they had to say and whatever kind of uh, tape they had of a sermon. We could get that. And so we, 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 we really dug in trying to understand it. And I, I finally realized that, you know, as radical as it was, that Jesus had already come and that I'd been preaching the wrong thing. So I'd always been a person who just stood for truth. Uh, I'd not had a lot of fellowship with local churches for years because I didn't believe in hell. So I was already kind of an outcast, but now all of a sudden decided that Jesus is not coming back. I really, did, really did become an outcast. But, but that was the conclusion that I reached after again being being moved by John Bray's words to study the issue. And so, uh, when I when I finally felt like that this was indeed the truth, I didn't know what to do. Uh, I I was part of a fellowship of churches and I'd preached to those churches since I was a boy and people generally loved to hear me preach and loved to have me and I'd come on week come on weekend meetings or weekly revivals or whatever and and those ministers would visit my church. But um I knew that if I came out with the idea we're not living in the last days, the world's not about to end, that I would um uh, my my world would blow up. <laughs> so I I put I put the ideas and thoughts that I had, was now espousing on the back burner of my life for about a year, and I just I just kind of sit there. But obviously the Lord wouldn't let me leave them there, and so when I finally went public with my new understanding of end times, then uh, my world did blow up and. Uh, I haven't preached in those churches since. And that, that was one thing that spurred me to write the book. Everybody felt like that Brother Glenn had left the faith, had deserted, had deserted the truth, and I could, but I didn't get a chance to preach about it and explain. But I um, thought if I write, write a book, maybe someone will read it, someone will understand that I still love Jesus and I, haven't left the faith and still trying to live for him. And um, so that that's what really pushed me into writing the book. And again, I wanted to write it in such a simple, plain way that everybody could understand it. And you already mentioned that, how simple and plain the book is. And um, don't, don't even, didn't use any big words. I didn't even use the word preterism and uh, didn't use any fancy Preacher jargon, but <laughs> just uh, everyday everyday language for the average person, and that's been one thing that a lot of people have praised about the book is anybody can understand it if you want to understand it. But um, so I have to give Brother John Bray credit for having spurred me in the direction of federalism. Again, it was just a radical idea of thought. It just, it just couldn't possibly be true. Um, but and I, I didn't want anything to do with it. But um, and, and people tell me now they're sorry for me that I don't not looking for the Lord to come back. But um, that that hope is a false hope. It's a hope that's not going to be fulfilled. And, and so. Uh, and of course, it's more and more evident as time goes along. We all know all the promises about Jesus coming that have been made through the years, and none of them, all of them have failed because all of them are wrong because he's already returned. And so, uh, 
But anyway, um, my life, my life turned around in such a wonderful way when I found this truth. I had secretly in my heart lots of times said, Lord, why, why are you waiting? Uh, what are you waiting on? When are you coming back? I mean, you want the world to get worse or what, what's going to happen? I mean, it's been so long now. <laughs> and uh, I also said to him, why didn't you leave a little better instruction as to when you were coming? And once I began to understand the prayer is you, I realized they left us a lot of instruction about when he was coming. It had just been hidden in my eyes, and I hadn't seen it. Um, but um, it's been a wonderful journey in the last 20, 25 years for me. I just had more joy in my life than I ever had. I've loved living for the Lord. I've loved him more than I ever had. So many questions that I had about the Bible have been answered by understanding what the Bible was about. I think back to myself that I preached so many years of my life really without understanding what was going on in the New Testament. But I uh, thank the Lord for revealing it to me and giving me a, a, another chance to get it right. And uh, so uh, that's, uh, and, and so I just, I've lost, lost a lot of fellowship of, of precious saints People, most people are still nice, you know, but the intimate fellowship that you had with the Lord has kind of been uh, diminished. But I've found hundreds of other wonderful Christians who love the truth and and just like you, Brother Mike, and, and people who are listening in maybe. I just found so many other people who love the truth and love me and the fellowship that I lost has been replaced many times, and I'm grateful to the Lord for that. But I still try to maintain fellowship with my old brothers and sisters who still think I've left the faith in the hopes that by and by there'll be an open door and I'll get a chance to share the truth. Um, I guess I'll pause and let you, <laughs> let you get in a word or let people ask, ask questions. Yeah, you know, uh, well, I appreciate what you shared there. Uh, I wasn't familiar that uh, John Bray had that influence in your life, and that's good to know. Uh, as he John, really did. Yeah, he was a an amazing resource for the Blue Point Bible Church as well, apparently, in times past with uh, Pastor Claire Chandler. Um, yeah. A lot of his resources at Blue Point. So that's amazing to hear and encouraging, to, uh, you know, gives me the encouragement to go ahead and dive into some of his resources and encourage folks to do so as well. American Vision is printing his book now, oh, wow. so, um, so you know. can get the book from the, from them. Amen. You, you know, and, and to speak to what you said there about maintaining fellowship uh, with others that we might disagree with, you know, that's a, I think, a message that folks of all all ilks, if you will, need to hear, uh, that you know we need to learn how to be better at unity and diversity, where we can have different differences, different perspectives. Uh, uh, we choose to we choose to walk in unity uh, despite that. Focus on the the things that we agree in, rather than always making it about the things that we don't agree in. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's so true. I, I, I I've, I've commented to what well, used to comment to Barry Sue that most people they, most people being uh, being blocked from the pulpit when they preach in many years in churches would just say to heck with you and I don't have nothing else to do with you. But I've continued to visit those churches and continue to be with them and be among the people. Uh, my my standing with them and the people want to hear me preach. When are you going to preach again, brother? Man? I said, I asked you to preach her. But um, the, the leadership has pretty much said, you, you're welcome to come, but you can't preach. But anyway, I, and again, most people would have said, let's forget about it then. But I've, I've continued for 20 years, 20 some years, and I continued to visit those churches and be with them and, and love the people and hope that one day I'll, I'll get a chance to uh, share, share the truth and they'll be able to understand it. 
Um, but I'm very much of a, I'm very much of a, of a opinion that, um, and even among the prayers, that we need to be tolerant and understanding of each other. Um, you mentioned about feeling like that you were recovering and know it all preacher. Um, and, and as a young man, I felt like I knew it all. Uh, that was the nature of our church, by our leadership. You know, we had the truth, and if you didn't believe like us, then you were wrong. Um, and that was kind of how I grew up. But nothing hears you that, like realizing how wrong you are about something. <laughs> and and that, that was something was uh, the end time, and Jesus was coming, and and I was so wrong about all that, and, I, and that we aren't living in the last days. And and I got well of that know-it-all disease, and I just thank the Lord for it. And so I still walk softly and cautiously and try not to be too adamant and too ugly and too harsh about what I believe. Uh, I share it with you, but I, I uh, won't cram it down your throat, and I won't, uh, won't uh, sell you your laws if you don't believe it. Um uh, I, I don't believe that preterism is a is a is a thing that you have to get straight in order to be saved. If it is, then we'd all be lost. But um, uh, and among prejudice, I wish somehow there could be more toleration among us. Um, I uh, I just uh, we 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 see the big picture that prophecy has been fulfilled. But all the little tangents to that sometimes separate us and keep us from having close fellowship. And, and that hurts me so bad. And that was, a, you mentioned my little sermon, the x-ray went over each other's heart. Well, the x-ray showed the heart was broken, and it was broken because of the, of the disunity among prayers. And so I just would pray that the Lord could somehow help us to fix that and to realize that We've been so wrong about some things, and we probably still are wrong about some things, and not to be so adamant and uh, sure again that we are certain that we're right and our brother's wrong in the prayers in the prayers circles. Um, so I don't know that maybe a lot of people might not like that position, but um, that's who I am. Uh, I'm just I believe in. And a little bit of tolerance to allow for the fact that I might be the one that's wrong in this argument. <laughs> and I know they can be because I have been. And so uh, I give that other brother the same benefit of the doubt. Um, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with you. And I think that, uh, you know, how dare you want people to get along? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, gracious. Yeah, yeah. I, I just, and I even, I even mentioned things about, about um, try, trying to, trying to reestablish unity. Like uh, some preacher that you don't invite anymore, let's invite him again, you know, to our conference and, and you know, try to reestablish fellowship and all. Oh, um, the, the um, but everybody, everybody don't feel like that, and I understand. But that's how I, that's how I see it. Um, you know, it actually expresses something you said at a more recent conference, the Berean Bible Church. You talked about the gates being open, and in that presentation, uh, I have you quoted at saying um, that you know, preterism has a great mind, but does it have a great heart? And yeah, that was what that, that was what Joel Joel Rosenauer said, the pastor that got fired out of Idaho, and it really impressed me. It fit right in with my sermon, and um, and we'll argue and argue about federalism sometime, but the question is, uh, do we have a heart for people? You know, and will we will that be our priority? like it was with Jesus. <clears throat>
That's beautiful. And interestingly enough, we have uh, we're working toward an interview with Pastor Joel in the next week or two. So uh, folks oh. familiar with him, they'll get to be familiar with uh, you know Pastor Joel and his testimony as well. Well, that's wonderful. He called me in August of 20, 2020, and he found my book. He was all excited. And, uh, and I guess what he was asking me is, how am I, I going to present this to my church? And I must not have given him very good advice because uh, a couple of years later now, he's been fired. <laughs> but... Uh, and truth has a, a hard way of, uh, you know, hitting people, unfortunately, to use it that way. Uh, but, but, you know, it, 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 unfortunately, people, when they rub up against truth, they don't always react to it with appreciation. It's probably the right way. That's right. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, you know, again, and I appreciate your thoughts because what you're showing to a lot of us is not, it's not about intellect. It's not about, you know, always being right. It's, you know, as I said to a friend, you know, more recently, I said, I'm not so much concerned with being right as I am concerned with making the truth of Jesus known. And I think that that can, you know, cause a bit of humility uh, where, you, you know, I can say, I'm going to say the truth. And if folks don't necessarily, you know, understand it or agree with it, I don't have to make that my end all in my fellowship. And you know, right, right. Well, that's kind of me. I'll tell you how I think what the truth is, but I'm not going to get mad with you if you don't believe it, or I'm not going to disfellowship if you don't see it just like I do. Um, and again, there's always that possibility that I'm wrong, because I have been wrong, and I'm going to be wrong again. So we need to be humble, and uh, in our presentation, and our dealing with people, and uh not be so quick to quick to cut off folks. I mean, there, of course, there are so many more predators now than there were 20 years ago, and, and it's a growing, growing cause. But we don't need to divide ourselves into, you know, 10 or 15 little bunches here and there, you know, that that don't uh, have anything to do with the rest of them. We just, we just, we just need to unite, unite around the the big fact that promises fulfilled. We're not facing the great tribulation and the antichrist is not coming and and the mark of the beast is something we don't have to worry about. There's so much so much big momentous things that are in people's minds today and uh, uh, in, in the prayer view we understand that all that's history and and, and we can we can rally around that, and if there's some tangent issue that we don't agree about, you know, it's it's not worth dividing over. You have your point, I have my point, and maybe by and by we'll come together. But in the meantime, let's love each other and be a part of each other's lives. Okay. Amen. I felt like that was a good mic drop moment. So we did the moment of silence intentionally. Let that truth sink in, folks, that we need to find unity. And, you know, we need to let the love of Jesus, the heart of God, go before us. Glenn, I thank you for your testimony. I thank you for your life. I thank you for the new things happening in your life. I thank you for the things coming in the future. And if you don't mind, I'm going to unmute folks here in a moment. But I wanted to give you a moment to share with us uh, what are some things that you would qualify God doing in your life right now? What are some blessings? What are some learnings? And also, what's in the future? Well, I don't know if I can speak to that very well, uh, Brother Mike. Um, uh, I'm just continuing to try to do the things I have done. Um, I'm uh, grateful to get invited to speak here and there in a conference and I started a book uh, called Christianity's Great Deception, subtitled The Church's Doctrine of Hell, that I asked the Lord to help me to finish before I died. And he's given me time, but I haven't done it. But I want to do it because uh, there's a lot of people after it, eager, eager for that truth. And of course, that was one thing that drew me to the Blue Point Church and Brother Clare 
was that uh, you did not believe in the eternal torture of the wicked in hell. And so that was a, that just, that was wonderful to find a, a church in New York that felt like that as I did. And, uh, but I'd, li- I'd like to get that book finished, but I seem like I just can't, can't get a chance or time to work on it or something or other things take my time. But I asked all of you to pray for me that I can, can get it together and, and, uh, it'll be a little simple book like, like the one I wrote already. And, uh, I'm not capable of writing anything very complicated, but I find that people like it when it's simple. So, um, I, 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 over the years had different reasons that I didn't believe in hell. And, but then I work on, work on my little book. It was, it was wonderful to realize that not a single one of the men who wrote the 66 books of the Bible, not a single one of them ever used the word hell or word that means what hell means. <laughs> it was added by the translators. And, um, uh, they actually took out a word and put in a, put in hell. And uh, we have to discover that and find out that to help us understand that the options, the options for man are life or death. They never were heaven or hell. Uh, but the life, the options are life or death. And we have death in Adam, life in Christ. And if we we're interested in living forever, then Jesus got something for us. If we're not interested in life, then he doesn't have anything to offer us. But um, he came, the Bible said, that we might have life and have it more abundantly. And um, I believe in life only through Christ. Through him we can live. And outside of Christ, there's just death and nothing. <clears throat> okay? Amen. Yes, amen. Thank you for uh, bringing up Pastor Claire as, you know, again, serving in the pulpit here at Blue Point. I appreciate your uh, mentioning him. Uh, I remember one time at a, at a conference in Sparta, he was sitting in front of Betty Sue and me on the dance before the church started. And anyway, he turned around and said to me, Brother Glenn, if there's a hell, then that means that the wrath of God will never be satisfied. And I have never forgotten that statement, you know, and um, it's so true. Uh, the wrath of God would never be satisfied if he's going to eternally torture his enemies. But um, he called us to love our enemies, and uh, he's not going to eternally torture his. And none of us, none of us would eternally torture a son or a daughter that rejected us, and neither would our heavenly father. Isn't that the truth? Well, you, you know, I, again, I definitely agree with Pastor Claire's uh, frustration with what he called immortalizing evil. And that was the name. Yeah, of the that's what. Uh, you know, yeah. And I agree. I think it, you know he did a great job of uh, showing the study, you know, behind that idea. Uh, and you know, if folks are ever interested. I know we have a couple copies here available in our library. Uh, we can make them available to you uh, for your edification. Um, Glenn, do you mind if I unmute some mics and allow folks to share some comments or ask a question or two? No, go ahead. I, I thought we, I thought we didn't have but an hour. But <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I'm not, I'm not a good, I'm not a good question answerer, but I, I do the best I can. Maybe there'll be just comments. Yeah, for the most. Go part. ahead. I'm sure. Uh, well, Edward uh, and Sandy and Brian, I, I see both of you are unmuted. Uh, Vicki, if you want to unmute as well, you're more than welcome to join in on our conversation. Uh, Brian and Sandy, you want to go first? Um, I, I'll go first. Um, Glenn, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes. What, what, I, what I liked best, what you said was... Um, Um, to make your new book that you're writing Christianity's great deception boy I'm going to pray that you get this book written because not only will you be able to fill it with all kinds of truths for people to hear but I liked what you said about people like it when it's simple and I so 100% agree with that you know we become Christians and we start speaking a different language and then you forget and you talk that same language to people that don't know Christ 
and we lose them because we don't we, we're not simple enough. And um, so I'm going to pray that you get this book written, that God gives you the the umption to get up and write a little bit each day until you can complete it. And um, and and I know from listening to you that you will keep it simple because I understand everything you say when you speak. Well, thank you so much. Stan. I appreciate that. God bless you. Yeah, thank you. God bless you, too. Brian just left the room. When he comes back, I'm sure he'll say something. Edward, go ahead. Jump in there and share some thoughts, brother. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I like how, how the church needs to be unified. Because for us to unify the world, you know, we first have to be unified amongst ourselves. And basically what we need to do, uh, the church needs to uh, like, like Glenn had said about um, having, you know, love, in, you know, because we have the head knowledge, but do we have the heart for God? And that needs to be demonstrated more, you know, that heart for God, because that's how we're known by love, our love for one another, which is not being demonstrated very well with a lot of people with their uh, uh, divisive attitude of dividing one another. Uh, even, even the apostles, you know, made that error when they saw that individual uh, doing miracles in the name of Jesus. And they went to Jesus and said, this guy, you know, he's not you know, walking with us or however. And Jesus said, if, if he's not against us, he's for us, you know. And then in Corinthians, you know, how they were like, uh, I'm with Apollos, I'm with Paul, I'm with Peter. You know, they had that division where, you know, the focus should have been on the centerpiece, Jesus Christ, you know. And that should be our focus, you know, Jesus Christ and in the kingdom, you know. Uh, that's That's my hope as far as unity is concerned, that we will be unified in Christ and just demonstrate that love for one another. Yeah. Well, I, appreciate it. I don't see Vicki unmuting. I'm gonna give her an opportunity there. Uh, however, uh, Vicki, I see you're unmuted. You want to thoughts? Yes, Brother Glenn? Yes, yes. Hey, this is Vicki. This is Vicky. Hey. I, this is the first time I heard your biography that you got saved at nine year old and continue to 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 follow the Lord and and become a preacher. And so I will say without a, a doubt that God has blessed you uh with a new wife and um and i'm looking forward to see you in person and talk to you more yeah hopefully we'll both be there in october what's that what did you say uh, brother glenn i said hopefully my new wife and i will be at your church in october yes yes i know so anyway <laughs> Uh, God, God is very gracious, and I'm sure your uh, new wife and you will have a, will live a very blessed life. Yes. Okay, Thank you so much. I'll talk to you in person when you when you come in October in our church. Okay. Okay. Look forward right. to it. Okay. Hi, Glenn. Yeah, uh, Glenn. This is Brian here. Uh, hey, Brian. Brian. Listen, I was li listening to your, uh, which I uh, heard before, but maybe not as in depth, of your upbringing and the way uh, at a certain age, whatever it was, say 12, we'll just throw 12 out there, age 12, that you couldn't participate in school athletics or you couldn't swim because of a bathing suit. And looking back, of course, that would hurt you. It probably hurt you at that time, too, because of you wanted to participate with your classmates, friends, and peers. Yes. But of course. But let us remember, too, that 
as we use in preterism, we use a term called audience relevance. Yeah. And whether it was your parents or your, what, your relatives, whomever, they, as you know, they didn't mean any harm. What they thought in their mindset, particularly being that day and age, in that part of the country, is what they thought was doing the proper thing for you to keep you straight and narrow, and it also the appearance, so you looked good. So, of course, looking back, it's easy to look back like the old quarterback when he throws an interception, but uh, as you know, and other people know that, they were only doing what was right in their eyes. You are yeah, absolutely. Only, but audience, well, of course, that wouldn't happen in, say, this part of the country back then. There were probably some cases, but by and large, that wouldn't happen in this part of the country back in, I'm going to say, the 1940s. Uh, I'm not sure. Or the 50s. But it wouldn't happen back up here so much. But let us remember, and as you know, they meant the right for you. It's just that they got things out of context and your yeah. whole story then till now has been a blessing we all have our ups and downs our hardships our own failures and our 55. and 50 right 55 years of marriage back then you have a wonderful wife now and you have a lot to be thankful for so as you know better than i do we focus on the good and learn from the bad right right yeah well, thank you. I, I am mighty blessed. I thank about all my children and grandchildren, and, oh. and they all love the Lord. So that's a tremendous blessing. Yeah. And to think that you have the opportunity to teach all these grandkids the way, the truth, and the life, the way it was written. <laughs> and and you can tell them one thing: it's July, August, September. Go ahead, go in the pool. <laughs> yes. Well, I would like God to. Commend, I would like to commend. And, I would like to commend Glenn on not being ashamed of the gospel, and seeking the truth, and speaking the truth. You know, not being ashamed of the gospel in spite of all the uh, backlash that he has received, and he's still preaching the gospel. I commend him for that. Thank you. Amen. Well, I thank each of you, of course, for being here and for continuing to be testimonies and witnesses to the gospel as well. Um, so thank you for contributing, for listening to what we had to share here. And uh, I hope that, you know, and I trust that Glenn's testimony will continue to be a blessing uh, to each of us. You can trust that I'll be making available a whole bunch of details for you at the power of preterism.wordpress.com. Things that were mentioned here, things that were, uh, you know, looking forward to announcements and so forth regarding Glenn's testimony and Glenn's ministry. Um, Glenn, I did want to let you know, uh, Dr. Cindy Coates is tuned in and she said, uh, you know, finish that book. And obviously she talked a lot of great things about you in the chat room there, thanking God for your ministry and uh, for all that you continue to display as well. Thank you. That's good. <laughs> And a lot of folks tuned in online as well, and I want to appreciate them. And I'm glad that folks are sharing this and are, are very much encouraged by you, Glenn. And uh, with that, I want to just ask you, uh, are there any closing uh, thoughts that you'd like to share with us? Is there a way that folks can uh, best support your ministry or maybe purchase your book uh, and also how they might get in touch with you if they'd like to? Well, um, my um, if you buy a book, my contact information is on the back page, my name, address, and email number, and phone number. Um, but um, I have a website. Uh, it's glennlhill.com. It's glennlhill.com. I noticed on the advertisement for this program, you got on my book, you got Glenn H. Hill. I don't know where that came from, but I'm, not, I'm Glenn Lee Hill. But uh, my um, my my website would have all the information about ordering the book, and it's again www.glenlhill.com, glenlhill.com, and the information is there about ordering the book, 
or you can always order it directly from Amazon, and your local bookstore could get it for you, but that might take a little longer. They don't carry it in stock, but they can order it. Or you can, on the website, you can order it through PayPal and use a credit card, or you got my address there, and you can call me or write me, and I'll send you a book. So um, get it from me, get it from Amazon, and... Um, Get it off my website. There are several sources there for you. And I'm grateful that it still sells good. It's been out 12 and a half years now, and uh, it's still relevant. And so every every week almost somebody discovers it and writes me and excited about it, and it's been a great reward uh, for me, uh, kind of a nobody, to have people be blessed by my own work. Um, give the Lord the praise and the glory for it all. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your continued testimony. And of course, I share the sentiments that everyone else mentioned here. We look forward to fellowshipping with you in October, uh, October 6th through the 8th, of course, uh, here at the Kingdom and Worldview Conference at the Blue Point Bible Church. Uh, we encourage folks to be there with us. You'll get to fellowship with Glenn as well and hear from the host of other great speakers that we have lined up. Glenn, thank you again for being willing to do this, uh, being here, and uh, I look forward to con being con you continued blessing uh, to each of us. Well, thank you so much. I'm honored that you were going to have me on your show. Now, thank you so much. And God bless you and the work you're doing. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. God bless you, brother. Take care. Bye. So again, we thank you all for being here and being a part of our session this morning. Uh, Glenn Hill is always a blessing. He'll continue to be a blessing. And uh, I want to remind you, visit powerofpreterism.wordpress.com a bit later today, and you'll be able to get, you know, resources galore regarding Glenn Hill. And we'll make sure we make that correction, glennlhill.com, rather than uh, the website, you, you know, I, I found it on Amazon or somewhere where they must have given him the wrong middle uh, initial there. So we'll make that correction, glennlhill.com. Uh, that's G-L-E-N-N-L, hill, H-I-L-L.com. And another thing that I want to remind everyone about is I'm going to make available the Burroughs of Berea podcast interview with Glenn Hill as well. So uh, if you, you know, perhaps uh, I know sometimes folks tell me the audio is not the best here on our platform. So if you want a much more clear uh, interview and if you want to just be further blessed by Glenn's testimony, I encourage you to check it out. Uh, I'll make that link available for you. And uh, I thank each of you for being here. I thank you for the, the various ministries represented sharing this video, being blessed by Glenn's. Uh, presentation. I do want to remind you his most recent teachings were at the Berean Bible Church. You can find his uh, link at Blue, uh, Berean Bible Church on YouTube, and you can listen to the uh, Gates Shall Always Be Open message, and uh, it was a blessing. And as Edward, uh, you know, thank you, Edward, for being willing to join with me there at the very beginning and uh, being a blessing to many of us, just kind of filling in as we waited for Glenn to be back. And Edward was there and listened to that and was sharing some thoughts. So, um, Thank you, brother. And I do want to share, you know, I'm going to close here with the words of Glenn in his uh, prayer, actually in the middle of that presentation that he shared at Berean Bible Church here in a moment. Uh, so, you know, I want to encourage you to catch up with that. And then uh, if you visit Fulfilled Media Presents, or if you just simply go to YouTube and put in New Covenant Network, you can find Glenn Hill's presentation of Understanding the Last Days. I know I actually have a person in mind that I'm going to get his book to, uh, actually within the week, I want to encourage you to be thinking about a person that you can share that book with. I'm sure that would do due diligence for the Glen Hill Challenge. Many of you know, we talked and we followed up with uh, folks from the conference. Uh, they call it the Glen Hill Challenge at the Berean Bible Church, uh, where you go around and you, you, know, you try to meet everybody and get to know people fellowship. So I think a way that we can work that out online is find somebody that you want to tell about Glenn's book and share that with them the, the simplicity of his book and, uh, you know, of course, visit his website, purchase a copy, and bless someone with that copy. Uh, I think, you know, it'll prove to be a part of the, the bigger picture of what preterism is uh, blessing folks with. And, uh, you know, I might close with this thought. Uh, when it comes to the power of preterism, something that I've been expressing that I think Glenn kind of highlighted uh, is the fact that preterism is a hermeneutic. 
It's not the end all of our Christianity. It's the blessing in understanding the presence and the purpose of God. Uh, we better understand God's presence, and it can explain with consistency God's presence in our lives uh, when we understand the uh, preterist view. And then, of course, his purpose. You know, there's folks that have all sorts of ideas about what God is doing or what God is going to do, rather than a foundational view from scripture. And I believe preterism as a hermeneutic enhances our understanding of the purpose of God. Uh, you know, just last night, I found myself in a discussion about the kingdom of God. And uh, I let someone kind of explain their view uh, and let it all work out. And then they said, well, I, I believe Jesus will dwell on earth with us. And, and I, my obvious question was, well, then why would Jesus say that the kingdom does not come with observation? That you will not be able to say, look here or look over there. There it is. That seems to put, you know, put to bed that view. Uh, so, uh, you know, again, just want to encourage us to be studying uh, and yes, have the mind, but also remember what Glenn's urging us toward. Have a heart for God, have a heart for God's truth and sharing that truth with others, have a truth for others uh, and be a blessing. So uh, I thank you for being here. I hope that these resources have been a blessing to you. And I'll end with this simple thought that Glenn reminded us of. Lord, though the lost are your priority, help them to become my priority as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all and go in peace.